devoted to tradition and customer service, Farm Bureau Bank has been serving rural America for over 20 years. From vehicle loans to credit cards and deposit accounts to the convenience of banking at your fingertips, Farm Bureau Bank is committed to bringing their products and services to you from sunup to sundown. Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm Christina Loren. We know that you work hard for your money and protecting it and using it wisely are top priorities. Tonight, we'll hear from the experts from Farm Bureau Bank and they have a special giveaway that you don't want to miss out on. But first, let's meet tonight's guests. We welcome Farm Bureau Bank President and CEO, Will Heilman and Director of National Accounts, Bob Baker. Welcome to the show. Great, we're glad to be here tonight. Oh, we've got a lot to unpack. We know that banking is important for rural Americans, but let's start with your background. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'd be happy to. I grew up in a small town of rural Missouri. We were good friends with the local banker, so I learned early on the importance of having a strong community bank in your town, as well as the value of really understanding your customers' needs and providing great service. So when I went off to college, that's really what I wanted to be, was a banker, and I've been doing it my entire career. I've been with Farm Bureau for the last eight years, serving rural America and helping provide great banking services. And you're also a family man. I understand your family's watching tonight. They are. My <laughs> wife, Mary Ann, is in San Antonio, and I have two college-age kids, so they may be studying. <laughs> <laughs> you hope. <laughs> they should be studying dad because we've got a lot of great information to pass along tonight. Tell us about yourself, Bob. Hi, Christina. It's great to be here. Uh, I've been in banking for close to 20 years with the last six being at Farm Bureau Bank. I grew up in Seguin, Texas next to a cattle ranch. Seguin's a small town outside of San Antonio and rural America is very important to me. I had one set of grandparents that owned a grocery store in South Texas. I had another set of grandparents that owned or farmed corn and soybeans in eastern Iowa. Rural America is where I was raised. It's what I'm used to. Right now, my wife, Laura, and our two kids live in San Antonio. And the, those values in rural America are what guided me and raised me. And we're doing the same things with our kids, guiding them and raising them based on the values of rural America. That's excellent. Now, it's great that you both have rural roots. You understand the specialized service that rural Americans need. How did Farm Bureau Bank get its start? Yes, I think we have an interesting history. We. Uh, are formed by a number of Farm Bureaus. Farm Bureau for years has been offering insurance services. And in the 1990s, they also started selling credit cards. And it became apparent that banking and the insurance services of Farm Bureau fit really well together. In 1999, uh, we formed a fully chartered bank. We offer the same products and services that you can get from your local bank. Uh, we just do it in a different manner. We don't have traditional branches. We provide our services through your Farm Bureau insurance agent, or you can call one of our personal bankers over the phone. We just celebrated our, our 20th birthday. Ah. Um, we now work with Farm Bureaus in 43 states, and we have customers in 2,000 rural counties. So you work with other Farm Bureaus. You said 43 states. Talk about how the relationship works as you work with these additional agents. Yes, yeah, so um, like a traditional bank, folks really like to talk to a real person yes. when they're opening up accounts. And Farm Bureau has agents located throughout the country. You can go in and talk to that agent. He can get you information about the bank. Uh, he can help you open an account or he can get you in contact with one of our bankers. Uh, and while you are dealing with our bankers over the phone, they understand our customers, they understand rural America, and they can still provide that personal service. Which is great. I mean, it's so hard to find this day and age. Now, when I think of Farm Bureau Bank, I think maybe you offer only specialized services, but that's not the case. No, just because we don't have branches doesn't change what we can do for you. It just changes how you reach us. <coughs> Excuse me, but accessibility is only one way. We're different. We... <coughs> We offer the same products that bigger banks offer. We just can give you the personalized service that most rural Americans want. Over 60% of farmers work a second job off the farm. Of those 60%, 1.3 million work 200 plus days a year in an off the farm job. Wow. That's very unique to rural America. They work multiple jobs, they work hard. They may not have access to a branch. They may not have access to their local bank either because there isn't a location near them or they simply need to, uh, you know, they're working in the fields or working at their second job. It's the good news with Farm Bureau Bank. You can reach us anywhere. You know, so we're talking about loans, we're talking about refinancing, and then something as simple as just opening up a checking account. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay, so you guys offer everything that a big bank 
would offer, but it's interesting because I think some of these big city banks, they just don't know how hard it is in this ag economy right now, and they don't know rural America. That is where you are unique, and that's why we wanted to have you on the show. Now, you mentioned loans a little bit. Let's talk about borrowing rates because long-term mortgage rates are near historic lows right now, making it a great time to consider refinancing. What if someone out there is watching tonight, they think, oh, this is the perfect time. I have been reconsidering refinancing. What do I need to know? Well, a, a lot of us think about refinancing our home because that's generally our largest payment, but there's opportunity to save money on all of your credit. Uh, your auto loan, your tractors, those other things can be uh, refinanced as well. And a lot of folks don't think about refinancing your vehicle. You're really just looking at your, your mortgage and those other products can save you just as much money. Okay, but it's a good time. You don't want to wait in some cases, especially because there's so much uncertainty in the ag economy right now with what's going on with trade. Weather is always so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So it might be a good time. Maybe you have a question about that. We invite you to call us. We're going to give you that number in just a moment. Now, Bob, you basically offer everything that you'll find at a traditional bank, but talk about how your services are tailored to rural Americans and what really sets you apart from some of these other banks. Well, being owned by Farm Bureau, 100% owned by Farm Bureau, our board consists of Farm Bureau leaders. We're, we have a unique charter. Our mission is to serve Farm Bureau, and Farm Bureau represents rural Americans. They represent agriculture, and so it's, it's just, it's very true to our mission, and that's who we are. We have the checking accounts that you need, the savings accounts, we have Roth IRAs. I mean, we have the same suite of products that most of your local banks and your big box banks have. Our products and our pricing are just catered towards rural America. We don't have branches, which allows us to pay better rates on deposits, uh -huh. maybe charge a little different rate on a loan than some of our competitors, and we feel like that's a real advantage. And it's such an evolving business as well. We know that you stay on top of all the trends that are changing. And so that's something else we're going to unfold a little bit tonight as we continue on through the show. But you know what I'm really startled by is how far you've come. You go back to your roots, serving the same Americans that you had to deal with when you were growing up on the farm, very similar to your grandparents, right? Yes, life has a <laughs> funny way of preparing you for the future. Uh, we, Like I said before, rural America is very dear to us, but we also support uh, ag education and leadership in this initiatives through our partnership with Farm Bureau. Oh, well, uh, we get to hear from somebody who I think a lot of our viewers are familiar with. Maybe they're wondering, though, about the Farm Bureau family. Where does your bank fit into that equation? I mean, a lot of our viewers are familiar with AFBF, but how do you guys fit in? Sure. So I'm sure a lot of folks know the American Farm Bureau Federation is the nation's leading advocacy organization for farmers and ranchers. But Farm Bureau is a very grassroots organization. There are our state farm bureaus in all 50 states as well as county farm bureaus. Our uh, bank is owned by a number of those state and um, the American Farm Bureau Federation. Um, we've had a great relationship with Zippy Duvall, who is the president of the American Farm Bureau Federation. He has been a supporter for a long time. Uh, he's a customer and he's a really personal friend. And he actually did a short video would like to share that talks about the relationship we have with Farm Bureau. All right, let's take a look. Well, American Farm Bureau is celebrating its 100th year this year, and if you look back over our history, you know that our mission is to, to be the voice of America's farmers in the policy area where we do it at our state, county, and at, at the national level here in Washington, D.C. Over the years, as the Farm Bureau started progressing to decide how they're going to help improve the life of farmers and how they're going to help improve the life of people in rural America. We picked up uh, on that no insurance company wanted to go out and provide those services for our, our members. So farm bureaus across the country stepped up and provided those services. And then we got into the late 1900s and, and we realized that banks were being consolidated and they were moving from our communities to more uh, populated areas. So Farm Bureau saw the need and saw the vacancy of having financial services there. So they stepped up and uh, are now providing those financial services for our members. It's about Farm Bureau taking care of rural America and fulfilling that commitment to be there to help farmers and ranchers and their communities thrive in the future. So at American Farm Bureau, we are a customer of the bank and we use, utilize their services to, here at American Farm Bureau. But on a personal level, back on the farm, uh, my last pickup truck that I bought, I went to my county Farm Bureau office and told them I was interested in getting a Farm Bureau bank loan for my new truck. And uh, two hours later, there was a check at the Farm Bureau office 
with no hassle, very easy to do, and my uh, local Farm Bureau office helped provide that service for me. I also use their credit card services uh, that online I can manage and uh, is a huge uh, asset to me on my farm and as I travel the country. So as president of American Farm Bureau, I had the opportunity to travel America and talk to farmers and ranchers uh, across the country. And of course, we talked about issues that face uh, farmers and ranchers and how we might correct the policies to make life better there. But one of the things I heard was, you know, the, the need for us to be able to tell our story and tell it in a way that people understand what's going on in agriculture and understand where their food comes from. So Farm Bureau Bank has stepped up and become a big partner with us in our uh, American Farm Bureau Foundation for Agriculture. They participate in a lot of the programs that we do at a convention by sponsoring our Flapjack Breakfast, which is a fundraiser for our foundation. But in a big way, they've stepped up and, and been, been a big partner with our Book of the Year, where we deliver a, a book uh, that can be disseminated out to all of our uh, counties and through their school systems to tell the truth about what's going on in agriculture so that our children grow up understanding where their food comes from based on the truth and not what someone might make up. So we appreciate what Farm Bureau Bank has done to be a great partner in helping uh, ag literacy across America. Wow. Those are strong words from a man who I know a lot of our audience considers to be very genuine. I certainly do. It's always nice to hear from Zippy. He's a regular on our show, on many of our shows actually here on RFD TV. Now he did mention some of the programs that you work together on. Talk a little bit more about that. Yes, a couple of things that we work on are ag education and supporting the future generations of farmers. One of the big programs we work with in ag education is Ag in the Classroom. And as Zippy said, it, it really helps educate uh, children on all the work that goes into bringing food on their table. As we talked about earlier, I grew up in a small town, so I got to see firsthand all the work it takes to grow our food. But now that I live in a city, um, I'm not sure all the kids really understand that. And then food does not magically come from the shelf of your grocery store. And <laughs> the, um, the Ag Foundation really helps uh, with that education. Another thing we do is we sponsor the annual book of the year. It's a children's book that uh, talks about uh, agriculture. And last year in 2019, it was right this very minute, written by Liesl Deplepsen and illustrated by by Renee Corella. And what's great about this book is it talks about every minute of every day, someone is working really hard to put food in your table. And it's a great children's book and a great way to spread uh, what goes into raising food today. You know, and I know you also do a lot of work with the Young Farmers and Ranchers program. Talk a little bit about that, Bob. Sure, we proudly support the Young Farmers and Ranchers program, which cultivates and grows the future leaders of agriculture. It's open to Farm Bureau members ages 18 to 35. It's a family-oriented program. And growing the future leaders is important because the average age of today's farmer is 59. And uh, we need to build the future of agriculture, the future leaders of agriculture, because it's not only important to us, it's important to the world. Absolutely. And it, it's a hard time right now to get more young people involved in agriculture. Absolutely. So the fact, that, the fact that you're investing in the future of these young agriculturalists is a beautiful thing. Okay, well, we will continue to talk more about what's happening with AFBF and how you're related. For those of us joining us tonight, I want to remind you that Farm Bureau Bank has generously provided a great gift away for three lucky winners tonight. All you have to do is visit farmbureau.com slash RFD TV to enter for an OGO backpack filled with some great merchandise from Farm Bureau Bank, including a $200 Visa gift card. Now it's easy to enter. You have to do so by September 10th before midnight. Again, you want to go to farmbureaubank.com slash RFD TV to enter. It'll take you about two minutes, a really simple questionnaire. Now, one of the questions you're going to see on that questionnaire is, are you a Farm Bureau member? Just hit yes or no. You do not have to be a Farm Bureau member to win. And what a giveaway. We're giving away three of these tonight. We're going to pause for a quick break, but we want to open up this conversation to you. It's your turn now. Call in with your banking questions for our experts. Maybe you have a question about refinancing or about an auto loan, even improving your credit score. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. Join the discussion at 877-731-6733. More Rural America Live with Farm Bureau Bank next.
Welcome back to Rural America Live. Tonight we are talking with the experts from Farm Bureau Bank. They specifically serve the unique needs of farmers and ranchers with a strong foundational knowledge of the banking industry and personalized service. And they're standing by to answer your banking questions live on the air. And our phone lines are now open. The number to call is 877-731-6733. Maybe you have a question about online banking or you've recently considered taking out a loan and you want to make sure that you're ready for that financial commitment. Our experts are here to help you tonight. 877-731-6733. Six seven three three. Joining us once again is Farm Bureau Bank President and CEO Will Heilman and Director of National Accounts Bob Baker. And now we want to welcome in Director of Sales Allison Hamlin. Thanks for joining us, Allison. Tell hi. us about yourself. Yes, hi, Christina. Thank you. I'm excited to be on the show tonight. I grew up around the Houston area, and now my family and I live in a small suburb outside of San Antonio, Texas. I've been working for Farm Bureau Bank for almost 14 years, and during that time I've um, held different positions along the way. Currently I'm responsible for managing the sales team that work closely with Farm Bureau insurance agents to help provide uh, our products and services to their customers. Okay, well we look forward to adding your knowledge to the panel that's already been giving us some great information tonight. You know, we have to talk about tips for our viewers because it's, it's hard right now to find a bank in some rural locations. What's going on there? The term we use in banking is, is banking deserts. That's an area where there's no bank location within 10 miles. It's a growing problem in rural America because uh, when bank closures or when bank when bank locations are reduced, a couple of things happen. One is access to loans, small business loans is reduced. Last year, one in four small business owners couldn't get access to the lending they needed to fund or grow their business. There's a second thing that happens. Community banks are in their communities, they know the local market, and they have a personal connection with their, uh, with their customers. We have the same problems. When these locations are, are gone, that personal connection is lost. And while the effects of that may not be felt right away, over time it has a real detrimental effect to the economic health of rural communities. Absolutely. And in fact, um, since the financial crisis in 2007, over 9,600 bank branches have closed across the country. That's close to 10% of closures of bank branches in one decade. Sheesh. These closures tend to hit rural America first and they tend to hit hard. You know, when you think about many farms also operating as small businesses, not being able to get the loans that they need, mm -hmm. that's really tough. You know, talk about how Farm Bureau can help people in these deserts. Well, if you're lucky enough to have a local community bank, uh, certainly uh, that local community bank or someone you ought to work with. But as Bob mentioned, there's many places where that's no longer possible. So what we're trying to do is bring that benefit of a local community bank by having bankers that understand rural America, but delivering those services in a way that can still serve those areas. So the Farm Bureau agents are available in many cases, but if there's not a Farm Bureau agent in your area, you still can talk to one of our knowledgeable bankers over the phone. So it's really uh, taking what was lost and trying to provide a new way of giving rural America those services. You know, it's a good way to establish trust as well. When you know the person who's calling you by their first name, you've worked with them multiple times in the past. I think that is so refreshing. This well, those stage. agents can also provide that face-to-face -face service that customers really love. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, want to remind everybody, Farm Bureau Bank has generously provided a great giveaway for three lucky winners tonight. All you have to do is visit farmbureau.com slash RFDTV to enter to win an OGO backpack filled with some great merchandise from Farm Bureau Bank, including a $200 Visa gift card. And this is a nice backpack. I mean, I saw one of you had one of these on coming in, and it's got all kinds of organizational space in it, and uh, it's just really you can nice. lose all sorts of things in all the pockets. <laughs> Durable <laughs> as well. So the backpack itself is a great win. On top of that, you get the $200 gift card. And it just takes a couple minutes to just sign up online. It's really easy to do so. Again, that's farmbureaubank.com slash RFD TV. All right, let's talk about depositing checks because you really bring things back to the basics. Not only do you do the big things that people need, like refinancing, you also do just simple banking. Depositing checks, though, so some people are skeptical about doing it with their phone. They want to go into a branch, and that's one of the reasons why they like to keep a local branch. When those go away, what choice do you have, and is it safe to do that? 
it, it is absolutely safe to deposit a check through your phone. The convenience won me over, the first couple of times I deposited a check through my phone, the convenience won me over very, very quickly. <laughs> you just have to get used to it. The pho the f these phones have become such a big part of our lives and it's such a simple way. You don't have to drive to the branch like we talked about earlier. For a lot of rural folks, driving to the branch is 30 minutes one way. That's right. That's an hour you can save out of your day and that, that's real time to folks in rural America. And I know a lot of times with ATM machines these days, this day and age, um, fraudsters will even put a camera to try to get your PIN code. So, I mean, it's really hard. It's just, there's, there's chances that you're taking either way. But it does seem like banking online using your phone is actually becoming the safer option. Some of our viewers, though, they may not be completely sold on accessing their bank information online, especially older Americans. My mom, for example, she doesn't want anything to do with it. What would you say to someone like that? I, we're sympathetic to her, to her feelings. A lot of people are wary or leery when it comes to banking through their phones. 90% of people in this country own a smartphone, and the banking app is the second most used app on the phone. Social media is number one, the third one being weather, which those who live in rural America, we certainly watch weather as well. But that's the beauty of banking through your phone. It's convenient. You've got everything you need at, the, at, at your fingertips. You can check your account history. You can look up your bank statements, make a payment online. It's all right there. You can do this from your truck. You can do this from your home. It's, the convenience is really tough to beat. Absolutely. And Bob, do you have any information, maybe some tips for our viewers out there on how they can keep their information safe and secure while using that convenience of online banking? Yes, we recommend a couple of things. First is we don't rec we recommend that you never send your banking information through a public Wi-Fi network. So if you're in a public place and they offer free Wi-Fi, I mean, if you're if you're checking the weather, you're checking something really quick, that's fine. Don't send your banking information through that. You don't know who secures the network. You don't know who could be monitoring. We recommend going through your cellular service. It's encrypted and it's secure. The second thing we recommend is a lot of us have Wi-Fi in our homes. I think my children would revolt if I turned the Wi-Fi <laughs> off in our homes. Just make sure it's password protected. Uh, you just you don't want strangers connecting to your Wi-Fi. You don't know who your neighbors are, especially in cities, but in rural America, you just you, you never know. And so just putting a password on your Wi-Fi network is just a simple thing you can do to make your connection more secure. All right. And Allison, many people take for granted how easy it is to connect to Wi-Fi without thinking of the potential for someone to take advantage of them. Why is this so important to remember? Definitely. I don't think it's something that most people think about. Along those lines, you want to make sure that you um, take care of your cell phone and make sure it's secure. Um, you want to take advantage um, of your auto lock feature. You know, these cell phones have become such an essential part of our culture. Um, there's so much information about like who you are and what you're doing. So taking advantage of the auto lock feature is very important to make sure that you have an unlock or lock feature on the phone. A lot of times these days, these phones have um, biometric features such as the fingerprint sensor and may also the facial recognition. So if you don't want to take advantage of those, I would also recommend that you um, do the fingerprint, uh, sorry, the, uh, the unique pen that you can set up on the cell phone. Um, ultimately, you just want to make sure that the information on your phone is secure, that someone can't just pick up your phone and access all of your information. While we're talking about mobile banking, the other option that you want to make sure, other advice that we want to um, let you know about is um, taking advantage of your um, official mobile app. So making sure you go and contact your financial institution's official mobile app. You want to make sure that you're downloading the right one. The Farm Bureau Bank mobile app looks like this, and it's a great way you can find it right on the App Store. Okay. And we know many rural Americans are skeptical about doing banking online, but I mean, you're the CEO of the company, Will. Talk a little bit about why they can feel safe with Farm Bureau Bank. Well, there's really nothing more important to a bank than to keep, you know, the customer's information safe. In the old days, you know, what you cared about was a big marble building with a really thick vault so that uh, the branch wouldn't be robbed. Well, today, the thieves are not uh, coming into the branch and looking at the vault. They're really looking online to steal information. Oh. And we, we invest an enormous amount of resources, and it's something we think about every day is to keep our customers' information safe. Okay, that's so comforting to hear, Absolutely. especially knowing how smart these scammers are getting. They're just getting more and more sophisticated. Now, Bob, robocalls, speaking of which, and phishing scams are a big problem right now. What should our viewers be alert for when it it comes to protecting their bank information. It's something you're going to deal with in today's world. Uh, 
bank, the, the fraudsters are getting really, really good at creating an email that looks like it comes from your bank, whether, uh, whether it be us or someone else. There's also phone calls that you will receive with numbers that are very familiar, either close to yours or close, they know where you, if they know where you work, close to your employers. Just be, be wary of anything that looks suspicious. Uh, the common scam we hear a lot about is someone impersonating the IRS, you know, saying you're behind on your taxes or, you know, you haven't made your payment and they call you wanting to, you know, wanting you to give them their social security number. The IRS is never going to call you on an incident like that. Their first contact is always through direct mail. With financial institutions, it's the same thing. They have a preferred channel to reach you. We have a preferred channel as well. We do not need to call you to ask you for your account number or your password. And there's a simple explanation for that. We know what it is. I don't need to call you for your account number. And so if you suspect that your information might have been hacked or someone has your bank account number, hang up the phone. Someone calls you, hang up the phone, look up your bank's number on the website, call the bank directly. We'll be happy to help you. That is fantastic guidance. Okay, we're gonna go to the phones now and Johnny from Texas is our first caller tonight. Go right ahead, Johnny. Hi, I had a question for y'all. I ahead. recently had someone call me, claiming to be my bank. Should I call my bank to see if that was them or should I just leave it alone? Well, not Johnny, first of all, thank you for calling in. It's great to hear from you. You should absolutely hang up. You should call your bank. Ask them if, you, if they've been trying to reach you. If there's a security measure or if there's something that they're trying to get a hold of you for, they obviously have a preferred channel and someone at the bank should be able to walk you through your problem. And there are times where the bank is going to call you. We may have information about your accounts, but we're never going to ask for personal information. That's I think right. that's the key. We're never going to ask for your account number. We're never going to ask your balance. Uh, we are uh, going to know that type of information. And the thing is, if you're ever suspicious, uh, then uh, hang up the phone and call us back. We aren't going to be upset if you call us back because you aren't sure it's us. That's right. But if you do have any sort of a red flag that goes up, mm -hmm. <laughs> make sure that you double check. It's just you've got to be that cautious this day and age. Thank you for that call, Johnny in Texas. We appreciate it. And that leaves a line open for you to call in and join the conversation. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. Maybe you've actually been the victim of a phishing scam or you've had somebody claiming to be your bank through email or on the phone. We want to hear from you tonight, 877-731-6733. So Bob, scammers are working harder than ever to steal your information. Talk about some ways that we can keep our passwords safe. Yes, there, we, re we highly recommend utilizing a password manager. If you go to your phone's app store and type in password managers, you'll have several options that pop up. They provide a couple of really neat features. The first thing is you only have to remember one complex password because the password manager will store all of your others. It's encrypted, it's safe, and you just have to remember one because if you're like me, I've got 30 different passwords and trying to remember all of them individually without repeating them would be difficult at best. The second thing is these, these managers can also help you update your passwords periodically. You know, every, we recommend doing it every couple of months, especially for something like uh, your, your bank or other personal information. Keeping it updated is just a simple way to st kind of stay ahead of the game. And then finally, try to keep your online banking logins different than your social media logins, for example, because if someone were to hack your account, steal your, your username and password, the first thing they're going to try and do is see what banks are in your local area. Try those to see if those credentials work as well, and then they have access to your information. So if, even if you don't use a password manager, we highly recommend that you keep your password for your banking and your personal financial information separate from all the others. Completely separate. That's so smart. Talk about some of the most commonly used passwords and how we can actually differentiate between a good password and one that someone could easily hack. Sure, we have a list here of the of the the most common the ten most commonly used passwords that were obtained through a data breach of five million accounts. If you have any passwords on this list, we highly recommend that you change them now. Uh, the bad guys are, good, are getting really good at cracking these passcodes, and some of these, if you, with, by changing just a couple of things, you can make them far more secure. For example. Uh, the, the one, the first, number two, password itself. If you change the S's to dollar signs and you take the letter O and change it to a zero, your password is still password. You're just typing it in a little differently. Just like with the next one, I love you. It's a great password. 
if you change Z, the O to a zero and the E to a three, you've already made it more secure and much more difficult to crack. And it's easy to remember. The, <laughs> you can get really complicated with this if you want to. At the end of the day, it's about, is it something you can remember? Is it something that you can and can use when you need it and access some of these password managers? They'll really help you. And regardless of how good your password is, it's important to change them. Right. Uh, and I know that's hard, and that's where the password manager can help you remember all those different passwords. And you'll find it in the App Store. Yes, I know some people may not be familiar with what the App Store is, no, but <laughs> if you Google it, it is actually a great wealth of tools to help keep you safe. And so you can use your smartphone, check out the App Store, and this is one of the big benefits of technology today, right in our fingertips. Okay, we're going to go back to the phones. Sean from North Carolina, thanks for joining us. Go right ahead. Yeah, I just had a quick question about a, a truck loan. I just bought a uh, F-250 Ford, um, 2,000 miles on it, bought it brand new. When is the best time to try to refinance that loan? Good question. It, it, it always varies. I mean, rates have been going down very rapidly lately. So in this, this rate environment, you may actually be able to save money even if you just bought a car a, a few months ago. It also depends on your credit situation. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, in a moment about how to improve your credit score. But ironically, by getting a loan, sometimes it will improve your credit score. And you can refinance uh, a few months later just because you have a better credit score. And therefore, you'll get a lower rate. Ah, very helpful information. And thanks for that call, Sean from North Carolina. We were talking earlier about the type of loans that you do. Many truck drivers mm -hmm. <laughs> are Farm Bureau Bank customers, right? Yes, 70% <laughs> of our vehicle loans are actually pickup trucks. So yeah. you can tell we serve rural America because uh, to us, a car is a pickup. Yes. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> okay, and that leaves a line open for you tonight. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. We're going to go back to the phones in just a moment. But we've been talking talking about keeping your banking information safe. And Allison, does Farm Bureau Bank offer assistance with monitoring? Yes, we sure do. We offer several different ways to provide alerts and notifications through our online banking system. You can choose either to receive that message by either a text or by phone or by email. The first alert we have is a security alert. So this alert would notify you in the event if your password were to be changed or if someone attempted to change your password. The second alert is an activity alert. So this is very helpful. You can set this to the amount that you would like. And if you don't want your account balance to fall below a certain amount, um, this, uh, this will help you and um, notify you. So in the event if someone were to have access to your account, maybe with like a debit card, you'd be notified if they were to access your um, account and you could see that your account balance was falling below the threshold that you set. And the third, trans the third alert is the transaction alert. And this alert is also something that you can set specifically to what you would like. For example, if you wanted to know every single transaction that came through to your account, you would be notified. Wow, every single transaction. Okay. And you know, sometimes, sometimes just being overly cautious is worth it, especially when it comes to our money that we work so hard for. Rural Americans, they work harder than any other people I know. Okay, so we've been talking about keeping your passwords safe. Now, when we go into our next block, we're gonna talk more about credit scores like yes, we talked yeah. about. And this is something that people have a lot of questions about. So we're gonna spend a good amount of time talking about the importance of your credit score when it comes to getting a loan. But again, one of the things that people need to keep in mind right now in this tough farm economy is that refinancing is a viable option. It's something that you can think about to help you get out of hard times. How, how does the process work if someone calls and they say, I want to join Farm Bureau Bank? What is the process like for them? Well, it really is like any other bank. So when you give us a call, we're going to need to know uh, your current financial situation. And uh, it's always best to, to refinance before you start to get into some financial challenges. And I know that's really tough right now in rural America because some folks have a number of challenges facing them that are outside of their control. Yes. Uh, but if you get in that situation, uh, it's always important to talk to your bank as soon as possible. I, there, there is no banker that wants one of their loans to go bad. Right. And the sooner uh, we can talk with you and work with you, the more options we're going to have 
uh, to try to help you with your financial situation. And one thing that just I, I get so hurt by is when folks, you know, are avoiding that call from the bank because they know they're having a tough time paying their bills and they don't really contact us until it's too late. And I would just encourage folks that are facing hard times, and I know there's a lot of that going on in rural America. It's not going to help by waiting to talk to folks. Talk to folks as soon as possible. You know, we may not be able to do everything you want to have done, but we certainly will try to, to make the situation as good as we can. Yeah, even if you're not facing hard times, but you know that it could happen, you know, in the next five to 10 years, even just knowing what your options are, that information, that knowledge is powerful. And so that's a good reason to give you guys a call at Farm Bureau Bank. We're gonna go back to the phones. Billy from North Carolina, you're our next caller. Go right ahead. Uh, yes, I was calling about these robo calls. Sometimes I'll get a call and it'll come back as my own phone number. It'll come <laughs> up on the caller ID as my own phone number. And it's got to where I get three or four calls a day that look like they're, they're local calls. They'll be, I live, I have, I live with a 599 prefix, and the calls will be with, you know, 599 or 336, whatever. They look like a, you know, look just like a, a, a local call, you know. But when you answer it, it's a, it's a robocall, though, or somebody trying to scam me or whatever. Yes, sir. Well, Billy, first of all, thank you for your call. We appreciate hearing from you. These calls can be very frustrating. Uh, ironically, on their way to the set today, uh, Will and I were talking, and I actually received a robocall, and I answered it because it came from San Antonio. I know a lot of people in San Antonio, and it was someone speaking to me in a foreign language. I, I don't know that many foreign languages, so I was pretty sure it was a, <laughs> it was a fake call. It's frustrating to deal with. I know it's unfortunately one of the negative side effects of, of what we deal with today. Just simply hang up and move on. It doesn't necessarily mean you've been compromised or there's anything really negative. It's just a hassle, which I completely understand. And if you can, block it. Yes. <laughs> Use your smartphone to block that number. Chances are they'll find another way to get through to you because they're relentless. But they um, we appreciate that call so much. Thank you for joining us, Billy. Now, before we head to break, we want to remind everybody Farm Bureau Bank is giving away an OGO backpack filled with awesome merchandise and a $200 Visa gift card to three lucky winners, RFD TV winners. Just visit farmbureaubank.com slash RFD. FDTV to enter and you have to enter before tomorrow just before midnight central time just remember that but if you do it right now it only takes a couple minutes and you will be entered to win all right our phone lines are open we want to hear from you tonight 877-731-6733 you are such an important part of this show call in with your questions or your comments about banking online or improving your credit score when we come back what you need to know before buying a vehicle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Rural America Live. Big city bankers likely don't understand how challenging the ag economy is right now, but the experts from Farm Bureau Bank, they do. And they're joining us tonight to talk about how they can help you thrive in today's challenging and uncertain environment. They're also standing by to take your questions and we wanna hear from you tonight. Our phone lines are open at 877-731-6733. Maybe you have a question about taking out an equipment loan for your operation or you're just curious about the various services that they provide. Give us a call, 877-731-6733. Joining us once again is Farm Bureau Bank President and CEO, Will Heilman, along with Director of National Accounts, Bob Baker, and Director of Sales, Allison Hamlin. And as a reminder, Farm Bureau Bank has generously provided a giveaway for three lucky winners tonight. Just visit farmbureaubank.com slash RFDTV to enter to win an OGO backpack filled with some great merchandise from Farm Bureau Bank, including a $200 Visa gift card. But really, I think the best part of that giveaway is the backpack itself. That is a quality piece of merchandise right there. So enter to win, it only takes a couple minutes, and we invite you to do that. Again, that's farmbureaubank.com slash RFDTV. All right, we wanna hear more of your questions tonight. We're gonna go straight to the phone. Susan from Arkansas. Thanks for joining us. Joining us. Yes. Uh, we have a piece of equipment that we have leased, but now the option has come up for us to buy it. 
So would we be able to get financing to do this through Farm Bureau Bank? Uh, that is certainly a product we offer and would love to have the chance to talk to you about it. Uh, that's uh, one of the challenges when you have a lease is it's great initially, but then many times you want to keep the equipment uh, once the lease is expired. And it's a great opportunity to go ahead and get a loan at that point. Great. And you can go to farmbureaubank.com if you'd like more information, Susan. We appreciate the call. That leaves a line open for you tonight. 877-731-6733 is the number to call in with your questions. The experts are standing by to help you tonight. All right, let's talk about tips for buying a car or a truck or even a tractor for that matter, combine this time of year. Uh, people in, real, in rural America, they rely on their vehicles so much. What do we need to keep in mind before making that purchase? Uh, well, yeah, there are a couple of things. There are a lot of factors to consider, but before you go shopping for that truck or that piece of equipment, we highly recommend that you know your credit score. Mm -hmm. Most people know what a credit score is. They even know that a high number is probably better than a low number, but it, it affects you in a number of different ways. And so managing your credit score and knowing what it is can really help you when you go to that dealer or when you go to purchase that vehicle or truck piece of equipment. Okay, well, let's talk about the five parts of your credit score that we have to understand. Sure. Uh, there are five key components to your credit score. Uh, the most important is your payment history, which basically you need to pay your bills on time. Now, we get calls sometimes because folks are concerned that they paid a loan a day or two late. That's not really going to impact your credit score. When we say late payments, we mean payments that have been more than 30 days overdue. And the more often you've been late 30 days or if you miss two or three payments, the bigger detrimental impact that's going to have to your credit score. The next is how much debt you have outstanding. Uh, what's interesting about the amount of debt, if you've never borrowed and have no debt, you may actually have a worse score than you have a lot of debt. So it's kind of the Goldilocks effect. You need to have had some experience paying loans back in the past to get the best score, but you don't want to have so much debt that it actually could be a burden to taking on a new loan. The third piece is your length of your credit. So a credit score predicts the likelihood that you're going to pay your loan back. So the longer that you have been borrowing, that's the more experience you have and the better that a score is going to predict your future payments. And um, it's really important to sometimes keep that in mind. Uh, I know we all kind of go through every once in a while and realize you have too many credit cards and may close a couple of them. Don't close that oldest credit card because it may actually hurt your credit history. Ah, very good tip right there. Allison, do you want to take us through the last two factors? Yes, the last two small sections of your credit score are the types of loans that you have and also the number of times you've applied for a loan within the last six to 12 months. In general, there are two ways we look at um, the loans. So for example, your mortgage or your car is con considered and falls into a category of a recurring payment. So these types of loans have a set monthly payment and term. The other category is what we call the revolving accounts. So these are like your credit card accounts. Now these accounts are different, they're viewed differently because the monthly payment is, a, is an amount that is truly just based on the balance that you may or may not owe. Okay, really good information. Now, well, some people may be reluctant to apply for a loan because they think just doing that is gonna hurt their credit score. What would you say to that person? Well, uh, I think uh, you need to look at what type of loan you're applying for. First of all, applying for a loan is one of the lowest uh, factors. And certainly, if you get a mortgage and a car loan and a couple of department store credit cards within a short period of time, that's gonna have a negative effect in your score. But what a lot of folks don't realize is the credit scores uh, take into account that you may be shopping. And your score is not going to be hurt because you're looking for a new type of loan. So if you get several mortgage inquiries in a short period of time or several auto loan inquiries in a short period of time, uh, that's known that you're shopping. And, and folks sometimes are afraid to go look for a better deal because they don't want their credit score to be run again. And that really won't hurt your credit. Okay, so you can still shop around to find the best deal. Absolutely. And if you're doing so, why not check out Farm Bureau Bank? <laughs> you have very competitive rates. I was just looking online, especially when it comes to an auto loan. So that's fantastic news as well. All right, how long does it take to improve your credit score once you start taking the steps to, to make those improvements? Well, your credit score is updated daily, so some things can have an immediate impact on improving your score. If you've paid a few bills late, 
just start paying them on time and that will make a, a really big difference. Now, if you've had a more severe issue like declared bankruptcy or had a judgment, that could take several years before your credit is fully restored. Okay, what's the difference between the different levels of credit? We all get a score, it puts us in some sort of a category. It's also different, different sometimes on Equifax versus other, other uh, websites that you can go on to. What do we need to keep in mind here? There's a couple things to consider. People with poor credit that scores below 6, 640, uh, 640 or less, there's a couple of negative things that could really happen to you. Number one, you're unlikely to be approved for financing, and even if you are, you're likely to pay a pretty high interest rate. So getting that score up above the 640, 650 range will definitely help you. With good, good or excellent credit, you know, 750 and above, you're highly likely to qualify, and you're also likely to qualify for a great rate. Okay, so that's the, that's what we're shooting for. <laughs> yes, and you mentioned sometimes you get different scores. Uh, there are lots of different credit scores. There are a number of different um, credit companies that provide credit scores. Banks actually will have customized credit scores, and they're all slightly different. So you just have to follow the same behaviors. But in general, if you pay your bills on time, you have the right amount of debt, and have a good credit history, you're going to have a good credit score across all of the different companies. And sometimes it just takes some simple steps to improve your credit score. Can you walk us through the various ways that we can? Sure, absolutely. Will mentioned earlier, making your payments on time is a key feature. I like to call it set it and forget it. <laughs> so if and set it and forget it, you basically you, through your bill pay or through your credit card company, you set it up to where the minimum payment is made every month. Now, I would never tell someone to only make minimum payments on their credit card, but the set it and forget it feature basically means you're not going to miss a payment. So therefore, your, your payment history is going to look good. And if you're a day late, you may have a late fee, but it's not going to meaningfully impact your credit. The set it and forget it feature, if nothing else, helps you avoid those late fees. The second thing, as Will mentioned, is keep your balances low. That's the key. And especially, so if you have a card with a $10,000 limit, you don't want to charge more than about $3,000. Mm -hmm. Simple reason is you're borrowing money. You may not be uh, accruing interest, but you are, but sorry, it's banking jargon. You're not being charged interest. Uh, I got to keep myself honest sometimes. You're not being charged interest, but you're still borrowing money for a short period of time. And so depending on when that credit bureau is reported or pulled, that's another reason you could see different numbers at different bureaus. And so you could be paying your bills every month, paying your card in full every single month. But if you're charging 8,000 on a $10,000 line, that can actually have a negative impact. Wow. And one tip you can do, if you charge a lot in one month, you actually can pay your card early or make a couple of payments during the month because it's generally the balance on your credit card bill when your statement is cut that is reported to the credit bureaus. Ah, yes. So you gotta watch mm -hmm. that date very closely. Yeah. Okay, that's excellent information. We're gonna go back to the phones. Michael from Texas, you're our next caller. Go right ahead. How are y'all doing this evening? We're doing, doing great, Michael. Good, good. Well, for, well, first of all, I've been watching an RFD TV for years, and I'm and I and I watch it every day. But I'm really glad that they invited y'all to come on the show because I called Farm Bureau uh, Bank just last year because I got the number from being a member from Farm Bureau of Texas. So uh, I. I called those customer service, and I just want to say that y'all have great customer service. Uh, I spoke with a few young ladies there in that San Antonio office, and they were was extremely kind and very helpful. Uh, the only reason why that I did not open the, up an a, a account yet, but I will tonight when I got the phone with y'all, is because my lack of knowledge of doing the online banking. And uh, I'm real glad that y'all touched on that. Uh, I've been uh, scanned before, and it took me ex an extremely long time to get all that corrected. So that was my only hesitation. But again, I'm real glad that y'all are on the show because y'all did y'all did explain it. And again, I really do thank y'all for 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 y'all's kind customer service. Thank you. Thank well, you. well, it's great to hear. We uh, really strive to provide great service, and it's always good to hear when we have. And, you know, sorry you had some challenges with your credit. I mean, that's a real challenge today is with identity theft, and uh, you can get false information uh, reported on your credit bureau. And it's important to check your credit scores periodically, and you actually can get a free credit score 
uh, from each of the credit bureaus once a year. And you should uh, certainly do that. And then many banks will give you your credit score just by being a customer. So Farm Bureau Bank, for example, if you have one of our credit cards, you can check every day what your credit score is. And if you see something that changes, it'll give you the opportunity, just like the alerts Allison talked about, to go make sure that someone hasn't stolen your identity or something's been misreported on the credit bureau. And those are weekly updates on the credit score number itself? Uh, they actually are, are daily. Wow. And now, they may not change every day, but uh, it potentially could. Wow, daily. Okay, that's something my bank doesn't offer. So <laughs> that's really interesting to hear. We're going to go back to the phones. Janie from Arkansas, thanks for joining the conversation. Go right ahead. Hi there. Uh, my question is, what kind of equipment can I finance? We, we will uh, finance sort of anything that moves. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, and uh, it just varies on the type of equipment, how old it would be, and, and so forth. But uh, give us a call, and we'd love to talk about your specific situation. Arkansas is one of our best partners. There are agents all over the state that would love to help you, or you could call us directly. And Janie, I want to give you the number to call directly. It's 1-800-492-3276. I'll give it to you one more time. 1-800-492-3276. All right, we're going to go to the Sunshine State to talk to Joseph in Florida. Go right ahead, Joseph. Hi, uh, my question was, what are ways to tell if an email is a scam? Oh, that is a great question, Joseph. Thanks for your call. Uh, one of there's a couple of things you can do if you if you hover over the link or whatever it is they want you to click on most of these scammers there's an invitation to do something whether it's make a phone call or in, and in most cases of these emails it's click on a particular link if you just don't click on it but if you just hover over the link they want you to click on if that web address looks weird if it doesn't match who it came from that's an immediate red flag right there don't don't open it do not never download an attachment that's the second thing these guys love sending an attachment that looks you know very simple it might say you know pictures of your kids or you know they'll make some personal connection to get you to click on it without thinking do not click on that address that's usually when the when the problem occurs just opening the email and hovering that mouse cursor over you should be perfectly fine it's a great question it gives you all the information you need that is great guidance right there okay we know we have callers out there who didn't get through tonight we appreciate you and we thank you for taking the time to call in i'm going to give you the number 1-800-492-3276 that's the number to find out more information about what farm bureau bank can do for you we only have about 30 seconds left for final thoughts will would you like to take those <laughs> well we really appreciate getting to come on the show tonight and share more information about farm bureau we, we care a lot about rural America, and we think that it's a place that's not being served uh, as well as it could by many banks. And uh, we want to be there and, and complement the services that the local community banks are doing, as well as provide more convenient services for those folks that don't have access to a local bank. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show and sharing with us what you do. We hope to have you back soon, because clearly Absolutely. there's an interest across rural America in what you're doing. Thanks, All right, man. before we go, don't forget about the giveaway for three lucky winners tonight. All you have to do is visit farmbureaubank.com slash RFDTV to enter for your chance to win an OGO backpack filled with some great merchandise from Farm Bureau Bank. That's including a $200 Visa gift card. Be sure to enter, though, before 1159 Central tomorrow night. And if you ever have any other questions for Farm Bureau Bank, you can reach them at 1-800-492-3276 or just go to their website, farmbureaubank.com. Their hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time and Saturdays at 8 to noon Central Standard Time. I want to thank you so much for joining us on Rural America Live. Wishing you and your family a beautifully blessed evening. Good night from Rural America's most important network.